Hello, this is Photography Gamer. Welcome back to the channel. Today I am reviewing the Flame in the Flood for the PlayStation 4. The Flame in the Flood is a roguelike survival adventure game developed by the Molasses Flood. The story revolves around an area that's been affected by an apocalyptic flood, the lands have been split and now you've got little islands where people live and resources can be found. You play as a young girl who has a dog. The dog will sense danger and predators and also help you find supplies. The other thing you have is a raft. That's how you travel down the river. The aim of the game is to make it to the end of the river and find safe haven from the flooded areas. The game is a roguelike. If you don't know what that is, it basically means death is permanent. So every time you play, it's one chance only. If you die, you have to start over again from the beginning. However, there is an easy mode that allows you to continue from certain checkpoints. But personally, I'd recommend the mode without that, as it's a lot more satisfying as an experience to play, and when you do eventually complete the game, knowing that you did it on one life is a real sense of achievement. The game has a campaign mode, but also features an endless river mode, which is what you would imagine it to be. You have to see how long you can survive without dying, and there is no actual ending. So the game is set in a woodland area and it has a very country folk vibe as does the game music, but I'll get into that later. But what's the game like to actually play? The game may look quite simple and child friendly, but it's actually quite difficult to survive when you first start playing. You'll die of thirst, of hunger, disease or just cold weather, or your raft may crash. You'll end up dying a lot in the first few attempts. But once you get to grips with the kind of the fundamentals of the game, you'll make a lot more progress. You know, it's got the main principles of all survival games included. You have to eat, you have to drink, you have to sleep, you have to keep your body temperature at a nice level. You know, there's a lot of different things you've got to take into consideration. You need to catch animals to eat, you need to find resources so you can craft items, you can even make yourself new clothing because there are cold regions later on in the game that you will need like really warm clothing for. One minor issue I had with the game was the inventory space. It's very, very small at the beginning, so you are gonna spend a lot of time in menu management, moving things around, moving your things from you to your dog, from your dog to the raft, and quite often there's a lot of things you just won't be able to take with you. Speaking of the raft, that's where you'll spend most of your time. Steering the raft, it's pretty simple and you can use extra power at times and avoid debris in the river. However, you will need to upgrade the raft if you want to make it to the end of the game. You can improve its handling, its strength, you can install other elements to protect you from the harsh weather as well. You have a variety of enemies to deal with from crows, wolves and even bears. But the main enemy in this game is the river and the survival elements. The game has a unique art style and it's very much a countryside vibe. The menus are very clear and easy to use, the interface is good. Overall, the presentation, the graphics, it's, you know, it does the job well. One of the best features of the game though is the music. It has a fantastic soundtrack featuring instrumental songs and also lyrical ones. The music is very folk based, it's very country music and it really suits that kind of mood of the journey because you are in a rural area. The sound effects are well captured and it all feels very well implemented and the sounds of the ambience, the river sounds, the water sounds, the atmospheric stuff. I can't really pick apart anything that I didn't like. Okay, so what's good and what's bad? What's good? It's an enjoyable adventure with a good sentiment behind it. The game has excellent presentation and it's very countryside vibes in terms of the art style. The soundtrack is awesome, the difficulty is nicely balanced and it's not too hard but it's also not too easy. The roguelike aspect can be repetitive and when you die it's back to the beginning again and some gamers are going to struggle with that. The inventory space is very small at the start and it can be a bit of an admin heavy task to kind of manipulate what items to take and where. Okay, what's the verdict? The Flame in the Flood is an enjoyable adventure game with a roguelike survival element. It's a very atmospheric game and the game world is very well imagined. I enjoyed it and it's a game that I've revisited a couple of times to play through again and each time I play it I still enjoy it. So my score for The Flame in the Flood is 8 out of 10. It's a very good survival roguelike game with nice presentation and a good meaning behind it. Overall, it's definitely worth a look. 
Okay, so that was the review. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. This is Photography Gamer signing off. Thank you.